with us, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus.
Lord, please have mercy on me. I don't want you to look at me. Just close your eyes and pray to your Father that God have mercy on me. Even as I've come before your presence this evening, He's the great God. We are before the presence of the great God. He says, We're heaven two or three are gathered. There I am in their midst. There I am. So we are more than three, we are more than four, we are just more than what you think. So can we ask God, God, I'm in your presence this evening. I ask for your mercy. Please have mercy on me. Oh Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. He says, It's faithful and just to forgive us all of our sins. Can we ask him that please, Father, have mercy on me? Even as I call on you this evening, I receive your mercy. I receive your mercy. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. My thoughts, my actions, the words of my mouth, where I have not loved as I should, where my light have not shown as I should, where I have not, have not made peace with people. God, have mercy on me. Where I have been disobedient, have mercy on me. Lord, tonight I ask for your mercy. Oh Lord, we ask for mercy. And even as we come before your presence, that we will not be a reproach to you. Oh Father, that I have come into your presence this evening. We'll be worthy of honor in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for mercy. Oh, we ask for mercy this evening. We ask for mercy. Mama, shut up. I don't sit I want you to confess that word mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. Ah, Lord, I ask for mercy. Have mercy on me. You are the one who knows how your week went. Ask God for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for mercy. Oh, my shanta, run to sanctity. Lord, I ask for mercy. Lord, I ask for your mercy. Oh, Rabbi Lord, I ask for your mercy. I ask for your mercy this evening. Lord, I ask for your mercy. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask for your mercy. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. Ways that have been disobedient to your word. Have mercy upon me. Lord, have mercy upon me. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon me. Thank you, Father. Lord, I ask for your mercy. Perhaps that even as a church, you will have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. We have been taught um, from the book of Matthew, but this evening we'll be looking at being a word, somebody who is worthy of honor. When you read the book of Matthew chapter 22, you know, as I was reading, one of the things that came to mind was you being worthy of honor. Talked about, I'm sure um, our pastor is going to share more light on that, but talked about a servant, you know, a king who called out to many and said, Well, come, come before me. I'm inviting you to my presence to party. Come, I'm inviting you. And all of them, they gave excuses. They went their different ways. They went for their businesses. And the few ones who even, you know, said they would come. Some of them did not even come. This evening, I want you to know that God has invited you into his presence. And so this evening, you ask him, Father, make me a worthy of honor. As I come into your presence, let me find you. I want to find you this evening. I don't want to come into your presence and go back the same. Oh, I want to come into your presence and my life changed. There is no man who comes into the presence of the Father and his life remain the same. Oh yes, there is nobody. And so this evening, if you can pray in the Spirit, if you can pray in your understanding, just ask for God. I am coming to your presence this evening. I want to find you. I want to find you. You have invited me into your presence this evening. I want to find you, Lord. Oh, God, I seek you this evening. I want to find you. Oh, my shanta, my run to sentinel. Hey, the little broken to she, but I'm so sensitive. 
produce fruits in hundred folds uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, that your word will be so faith in my heart. Uh, that my life will not remain the same. Uh, my life will not remain the same. Uh, my life will not remain the same. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Jesus. 
come into my heart. Let that be your declaration. Father, come into my heart. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. It's a simple prayer, but it's a prayer that is strong. And Jesus desires that we say to him, Father, come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Come into my heart, Jesus. Come into my heart. Mambo Sumto River Lab to Shedegade. Lord, if you can speak in the spirit, please let us energize this environment this evening. Let's begin to pray in the spirit. The Father, come into my heart. For every member that are far and near, those that are not far right now, those that are streaming online, the Father, come into my heart. My heart is ready, Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Everyone who will still come in this evening, that Jesus will come into your heart. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Will come into your hearts. Their lives will not remain the same. Jesus will come into their hearts. Their destinies will be changed. Jesus will come into their hearts. There will be lights. Jesus will come into their hearts. There will be no confusion. Jesus will come into their hearts. Those who are sick will be made whole. Jesus will come into their hearts. There will be peace of mind. So the sin the power that we invite you. Jesus
desperation for your holy fire. In 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 desperation for your holy wisdom. In desperation for your holy counsel. As we gather today, oh God, we ask that the hungry be satisfied. The thirsty be filled. Oh Lord, we ask that as we have gathered to drink from the wells that you have said, we ask that indeed you fill us, you immerse us, you submerge us until we are full with fullness of you. That indeed will take us into the fullness of the week. That we will manifest the glory, the wisdom, the splendor, the power of God in the name of Jesus. Jesus. 
Jesus indeed he wants to look at you and say, this one is my son in whom I am well pleased. Everything we desire for God to do for us, God wants to do more than you want to ask. Do you know that? Everything you desire of God, he wants to do it for you more than you want to ask him. But as a father, a lot of times in his mercy and love, he knows that if some of those things are released unto you, they will be destructive to you. So the more you release yourself to indeed become like him, the easier it is for us to carry God to the nations of the earth. Much more than anything you want to trust and ask God for every morning. Ask him, Lord, make me like you. Yesterday I was singing this song we normally sing. Shekinah, glory, you are holy. You know that song? You are holy. Shekinah, glory, you are holy. You are holy. And I was singing the song. The Holy Ghost opened my eyes to see why the 24 elders bow down, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy. They behold the glory of God, and the glory of God is impeccably radiant that it can't stare. And what constitutes the glory of God is holiness. It's holiness. So that means the moment a man becomes holy experientially, the glory, the highest form of glory is revealed. Yes. So when Jesus is trying to catch you to say, let me transform you, it's because he wants to bestow upon you a level of glory that is impeccably radiant that men can't fathom. The type that makes people go down on their faces. Holiness is what compels men to go down. I woke up this morning and the only burden the Lord put on my heart 
heart was holiness. Holiness. And holiness does not mean that because we are a sinner, that's why God is asking me to be holy. I hope you recognize that. Holiness is the fullness of the life of God. The fullness of the life of God. Once you get righteousness as a gift from the cross, it's your responsibility to give yourself as a slave unto righteousness so that you can become holy. Amen. I want to also advise us as believers. When you wake up every morning, before you jump and touch your phone, I want to advise to quieten your heart and search the mind of God. In Psalm chapter 5, verse 3, he says, My voice you shall hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning I will direct it to you, and I will look up. This was King David speaking. He says, In the morning my voice you will hear, O Lord. In the morning I will direct my voice to you, and I will look up. This man was a king, very busy man a very busy schedule. But he made it a point of duty to wake up every morning and the first thing he will do is quiet his heart. Let me tell you the importance about doing this particular act, what we call a routine. If you're a man or woman who is given to prayer and you pray before you sleep, most times when you sleep after prayer, what you do is give the Holy Ghost room to put upon your spirit. But like dreams, what we call visions of the night or encounters. By the time you wake up into consciousness the next morning, there are messages hanging over your spirit that you must download. Amen. By the time you wake up, if you were a praying person, this one I'm telling you, if you were know you, even if you're not a praying person, sometimes the mercy of God can be to and help you. But if you're a praying person, you must expect to receive information every morning. You must expect it. Because nobody does transactions in the realms of the spirit and not collect receipt. If you go to a market or shop and you swipe your card, they will give you a receipt. Amen. It's the same thing if you do transactions in the realms of the spirit by prayer. You must collect your receipt every morning when you wake up. There are wicked me morning by morning. You know that scripture. It says my pen, my mouth, my, my, my mouth is like the pen of a ready writer. The same King David speaking. That is when you finish doing those transactions in the night, you wake up in the morning, there are transactions and you're waiting to be downloaded into your spirit. Sometimes it has been downloaded into your spirit, you have to sort of pray in tongues to revisit them. That's why you have some dreams sometimes, and then you say, pray in tongues, you understand the interpretation. Amen. In other times, it may not have been downloaded by dreams or visions. It may be hanging, waiting for you to really just stretch yourself and say, I'm awake. I know that the first thing to do is commune with my father. As I commune, I will say, Lord, what's on your heart? In that instant, they have downloads literally. If you try this thing, you'll be shocked. Downloads waiting. They're just hanging. And the minute to reach out, you will notice to come. It will come in that it will come as prayer points. It will come as people to reach out to. It will come as people to call. It will come as some people that you will know it. And this one is a message from God to you. And what you do is don't be in a hurry. You stay and you prosecute it until you know you have respite. Yes. It almost feels as though as we go to sleep, men, there is a meeting in the council of the Godhead over your matter. And so the Holy Ghost will not take the report card of what has been discussed about you and hand it to you the next morning. They say, your matter was stable. And they say, you should go and strive for holiness. Start praying. Your matter was discussed. And they say, it is time for you to enter into lifting. Start praying. Amen. I'm trying to make it very contextual and practical so you understand how these things work. When you pray, what you have done is engage heaven on your matter. In fact, let me make it more practical. 
a man or a woman who prays in the spirit, the Bible says the Holy Ghost helps in our infirmities, for we know not what to pray. And he helps us pray with groanings that cannot be uttered. So, the Holy Ghost, who knows the secret of the mind of God, he goes into the mind of God and he brings out a fire with your name. And he puts that fire in your spirit and says, Start praying. So, he already has seen that in God's drawer, a fire has been opened, your name was amazing. And he goes to the page that God wants to deal with that day and brings it and install in your heart. You just find yourself praying in tongues. Sometimes you know the area, sometimes you don't know the area, but you are praying in tongues. Amen. When you do that and you are praying in tongues, especially in a particular matter that God has brought out to so want to attend to in your life, I tell you, I don't pray, the answer should come. When the answer comes, so the first person to hear is you. Should be you. So the same way the Holy Ghost put the fire inside you to start praying, it's the same way you will collect the answer and come and install in your heart so that you know. So this, my friends, is how people's answer prayers get missing on the way. Because you did the prayer and fasted. When it was time for the answer to be returned to your spirit, you became busy or you engaged in activity or you didn't wait to Thank you. 
climb up, coming after me. Please help me with that song. There's no more you won't keep down, lie you won't coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no Oh, 
but by all means, it doesn't mean that if you think it will go away on Sunday. If it will give you a headache, it will give you high blood pressure, it will give you all kinds of things. So why don't you choose the one that will give you peace? Because prayer, the Bible says, when a man engages prayer, then peace that passes understanding the Lord bestows. Isn't it better to have peace than to have headache and pressure? High blood pressure. Yesterday she came to me and she said, Please, ma, I desire for God to settle me maritally to heal me of high blood pressure. And I looked at the young lady, young lady, high blood pressure. Young lady. Because she has converted the problems into thinking and worry as opposed to prayer and praise. Not anymore. This far, no more for that. You have to look at the person and say, No more. No longer will I devote one second to thinking, one minute to worry. No longer. If I can pray, then I will pray. Even if it's for five minutes, Lord, I beg, help my life. You should say this thing doesn't around me. You have said in your word you do XYZ. Don't leave me. Don't forsake me. Convert it to prayer. If you want to worry, carry your Bible and begin to read. The easiest place to find prayers for times like that is Psalms. Just go Psalms 1, 2, 3. You will see plenty of things to sing to God. When you are reading the Bible, you are praying to God. Amen. Because these are the things that slow you down from becoming like Jesus. See that we occupy the first time with problems, challenges, issues. So that before you see chance to solve one, time has gone. Not anymore. The Bible says, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and the sun, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That means there will be enemies. Anywhere you go, there will be enemies. But the Lord says, he prepared a table. Follow me all the days of my life. That means it don't matter what the enemy does. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. The color of the goodness and mercy a lot of times it doesn't look like what you think. So you think it's not goodness and mercy because it doesn't look like the color of what you're expecting. But by all means, the Bible says, all things work together for them that love the Lord and are called and so every time you find yourself ask, do I genuinely love the Lord? If you genuinely love the Lord, listen, it don't matter that problem, God will simulate it to your advantage. All things work together. All things are the core of those together. Little those are taken up All things, all things, not one, all things. All things, all things. If I tell you what happened here last week, on the human Friday, strange miracles, strange, strange miracles. And the same person who was meant to be angry at us for our facility was the same one telling us, don't give up on God is with you. Strange things. I'm not joking. In a meeting, when we were meant to be saying, you need to give up this, you need to give Literally, I was watching the switch and I'm like, what's going on? The person looks at me and says, we can't be under pressure. God is with you. If it's big from the beginning, it will not last. The fact that it's not big, it means it's God that is carrying you. You better hold him well, he's going to answer you. I know that was watching like this. I'm meeting like literally like this. So we stopped talking, she began to literally speak in the mind of God and I was watching like this. And when I left, I saw him goes, what just happened? He said, I wanted to show you I'm in charge. He said, those kitty cat are in there. He said, I am in charge. I, all things work together for the good of them that love God. All things.
But before you see the, all these facts, the enemy will make you look like your life has come to an end. You are a failure. You are the worst. The reason he gets at you is because you buy it. Don't buy it. Switch it to prayer power. The only problem you truly have is when you don't feel like praying anymore. That's the problem. But should I tell you one secret? Any day you don't feel like praying, that's the day you should pray the most. You know why? Satan is around your corner. He's trying to do something. When Satan wants to finish a man, the first thing he does is take your prayer life. That's the first thing. So when you feel like not praying, that's when you should pray the most because Satan is in your vicinity. He's waiting to strike. He had to take the prayer because he knows the prayer will hinder his work. Yes. So the days don't feel like praying. That's the day you go and pour water on your face. You soak your face inside cold water and begin to pray because that day you know Satan wants to do something. So he had to steal the prayer first so that he can do something. And the day you feel like praying, don't waste it. God is in your neighborhood. He wants to do something. Don't go and sleep when prayer is hungering you. Don't quench it for Netflix and Mr. Blog when prayer is hungering you. Pray. God is in your vicinity and wants to do something. Oh, no. 
and you are still backwards as far as this quotient, you have a lot of work to do. And I want to give you an assignment. May you please write this down? Because the practicality of what I taught you now is what I want to give you as an assignment. The scriptures are the fruit of the Spirit. Can somebody help me with the scriptures? Galatians 5. I want us to read it because that's where your assignment is going to come from. So write one after the other. Love, number one. Joy, number two. Peace, number three. Long suffering, number four. Kindness, number five. Goodness, number six. Faithfulness, number seven. Gentleness, number eight. Self-control, number nine. That's a one page. Open another page. It's a sign we want to give you. Open on that page. Now, the works of the flesh, which are evident, they are adultery. So you can write all these ones adultery, fornication, number two, uncleanliness, number three, lewdness, number four, idolatry, number five, sorcery, number six, hatred, number seven, contentions, number eight, jealousies, number nine, outbots of wrath, which we call anger, number ten. Selfish ambitions, number 11. Dissensions, number 12. Heresies, 13. Envy, murder, drunkenness, reveries, and the likes. Write all of those ones down. The first assignment is you're going to ask yourself, as far as love, where am I? Calculate your percentage by yourself, by the Holy Spirit. You and the Holy Spirit ask. Love quotient, where am I? As I'm standing here, I'm asking my own question. My score has been given to me as far as love. Interesting. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Ah, thank you, God. As far as your joy, you ask, how easy is it for me to deep lose that joy? Is my joy constant or it is dependent on situations? The idea is to calculate where you are in each of them so that you will know in the next six months is going on a journey of hitting the penultimate for each of these parameters. Amen. Because it's a practicality. If I tell you to come like Jesus, it means I will show you the fruits that Jesus displayed. So that you too can travel on that journey to display them, to get those fruits. Amen. It's the practicality. That means we're going to look at your life and see if you are becoming more loving like Jesus. Or it's easy for you to hate people. If it's easy for you to hate people and say this person do me bad and that's it, I don't like them anymore. That's set and not Jesus. So if we are saying revealing Jesus, it means that when you notice you are that kind of person that easily moves from love to hatred, you tell the Lord, oh Lord, there's a problem here, help me. And you go on fast, using the scripture, saying, Lord, in the name of Jesus, the love of God is prohibited from me. I become love. For a season in my life, that's all I was praying. This prayer to me, for one season in my life, all I was praying is love, love, love. If I don't have love, I can't. I'll be too consumed with my life. It takes a lot of sacrifice to raise people. So this is practically that if you decide to take these fruits of the spirit and give yourself another six months, one year, who you will become at the end of this six months. Oh, I should share this example, this story. So, 
So on yesterday, I had a speaking engagement. I was going to minister somewhere. But before then, I had to go and meet someone to collect a document. And the person had told me to meet them at a particular place. Well, from my understanding, a particular place. So I got there. I didn't see the person. Meanwhile, the person met somewhere else. But I didn't get, I didn't understand the place. So the man was on the phone describing, describing. He was getting angry. On the other end, expecting that I should know the place. And me on the other end, whose time was being wasted, I wasn't getting angry, strangely. So the person who was with me, my EA, she was wondering and looking at me why I wasn't angry. Because I was running late to my appointment. And I was extremely calm. In fact, twice, my husband wanted to catch me, but I was still not angry. When I got to my makeup artist's place and she was trying to do my face, I was just apologizing to my makeup artist for coming late because she had given me almost an hour earlier but because of all those things we came late. So I was telling her I'm so sorry for coming. I said, oh, no problem, it's okay. And I was telling her how that somebody delayed me. And she looks at me and said, Ma, are you were not angry. I said, hey, I should be angry. Then the thing it was it's been a final voice and frustration. Because she couldn't talk all the while. She was just quiet. She said, sometimes she, my trust is to and she so surprised me. How can somebody waste your whole one hour and you were hungry? But this was not me before. Me before, I would have given you all the. You understand? I would have sent you to where you came from and back. Forbearance is you give people allowance to grow. 
Forbearance means you become the bigger person because compassion has grown in your heart. The love of God has grown in your heart, so you give them room to grow, meaning that they will misbehave. If a child is learning to walk, what happens? He will fall, he will stand up. As the parents, you throw the child away because he's falling down. You will allow them to make mistakes, fall and stand, fall and stand. Amen. Until one day they will master it. It's the same way if you are somebody who easily gets angry. Forbearance must be in your heart. The way you cannot throw away that child that is falling and standing up is the way you cannot throw away those who are annoying. You give them room to fall, to make mistakes and make and repent. Give them the room to grow. If God does not give you room to grow, He will have destroyed all of us since. He gave us room. That today we will tell God, I love you, I love you. We will misbehave tomorrow, I will come to God and God will say, Let your 
Dios que es otro. So every commandment that the scripture gives you is so that you can create a barricade around you from the enemy. So when I choose not to be angry and I choose to forgive, you don't my hand. I'm not stupid. It's not because I'm God wise. It's because I understand how the realms of the spirit work. Ignorance in realms of the spirit is not an excuse. So, when I listen, because you don't know, does not mean Satan will shake back. Is the reason why you come. In fact, Satan is praying so that you will never know. Satan has prayer points. This is why you have prayer points. He does. His prayer point is they will not know, they will not see. I will blind them. He said the God of the system has blinded the eyes of men. So he will stop you from knowing what you should know so that he can afflict. And that's why we say the Bible, you must read it day and night so that you know. Because that you don't know it's not an excuse. Even God himself must say, oh, forgive her, she didn't know. Excuse me. It doesn't exist. I've taught you been here before that 99% of the things you call process are the things you are ignorant of. Unfortunately. <laughs> this is a very harsh reality. 99% of the things you call process today, then the teacher is ignorant of. You didn't know it. You didn't know it. And God will say, I love her. Since she does not know it, I will take her through the process and she will learn it by force. Yes. So that means you can you can have such a smooth ride if you just don't know.
voices, if you can rise up and let us begin to pray. Let's begin to thank the Lord for His Word. Let's begin to thank the Lord for the reawakening. Let's begin to thank the Lord for the stirring in our spirit for more of Him. Let's begin to ask the Lord that let the fullness of God be formed in me. I remember we prayed this prayer last week, but again, I'm feeling we should pray it again. That the fullness of the Godhead, let it be formed in me. In the name of Jesus, let the fullness of the Godhead, let it be formed in me. The fullness of love, of joy, of peace, of self-control, of long-suffering, of goodness, of kindness, of gentleness, of faithfulness. Let it be found in me. In the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
thank you for your manifold presence here. Thank you for your manifold glory in our midst. Thank you for the tangibility of your power in the heart, in the spirit, in the souls of your sons and daughters. Oh Lord, as they go into the week, I see the Kida, Rekati, Lembra and Zaita. As they go into the week, in the name of Jesus, I declare prosperity in their hands, favor on their lives. An avalanche of open doors and help us on destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak to every area of a challenge in their health right now. On the strength of the one who is, receive a touch of the Lord. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ, a mighty touch of the Lord.
Hallelujah. We must give with a cheerful heart. No matter what you're giving to God, He loves you. Uh, you can never have give God. Even if you give Him a million, you can't have given. Yes. And so whatever you're giving to God this evening, I want you to give it from a heart of gratitude. Father, thank you for this gift. Thank you. I'm giving my offering to see. Thank you. And so with that joy that the children have shown towards us, we need to show back, express that love and joy to our Father in heaven. And so this evening, it's time to give our offerings. We have our envelope, which we use and give it to God. Uh, if you want to transfer, you can make transfers as well. Um, and so, if you package your offering, whether you're transferring or you're packaging an offering, please, let's just raise it up to the Father as we pray. Our dear Father, we are thankful to you this evening. Thank you for loving us just so much. Thank you for giving us your love. And thank you for your word that has come to us with power and strength. We are grateful to you. Father, even as we give to you this evening, from the abundance of that you have given to us, we ask, Father, that it will be a sweet-smelling incense to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray that our offering will multiply unto us in all dreadful in the name of Jesus. We ask for those who do not even ask to give, we ask that you make them a blessing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We just give you all the glory. For those who make their tithes, we ask that it is blessed. The heavens are open in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We just use this medium to thank you for the children you have given to us. Thank you for making them a blessing to us. We ask even as they've given to us, you will bless them in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you all the glory. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please, just before we... Just before we um, share the grace, let's just pray for our 